All right, so the other night we had a power outage and had my generator hooked up and I was running this little bad boy to power my water heater and something else in the house. You can tell by the clipped off end here that she's no fucking good anymore. We also can tell by the fact that this is loose. I've already had it apart part of the way. Figured I'd let everybody else come along for the ride. And that's where she let the smoke out. Look at that. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Tasty. Anyway, so I was running the generator. Water heater plugged in. And suddenly the generator stopped running. Investigated. Unplugged everything. Fired it back up. Plugged it back in. Ran for a second. Stopped running again. Did it a couple times. Figured the generator was shit because it is shit. And so I proceeded to go grab one of my other generators. Plugged it in. And boy, howdy, I tell you what, this thing just chugged that thing down to the ground. It sounded like it was going to give her all she got. That was when I started hearing the sizzling. So I shut it down, unplugged it, realized this was the culprit, plugged everything directly in. This is what happened to my water heater. This is the uh, PC control board for my water heater. We'll notice a blown fuse right here. This guy is a little melted and whew, she also let the smoke out and the schmoo it blew oil all over inside here. And of course it's potted lovely so there's no way to replace just that cap and ETA for this fine board right here two months hundred dollar board fucked a fifteen hundred dollar uh, water heater so yeah lesson learned don't trust staples with your valuables Anyways, well, I'm going to open this up a little further because it really started to, to burn into my brain that this thing's got a built-in fucking overload protection that never tripped. Never tripped. So I want to open it up the rest of the way. I'm probably not going to pull all these out. I'll probably just clip some wires and pull this board out. But uh, as soon as I get it out, I'll, we'll take a look. Careful, careful. Ah. 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 Uh. Uh. Yeah, switch hands. Get some light on this subject. Hang on a sec. And I said, let there be light. Whew. Now we can see. Now we can see. Do something about that fucking switch. Hang on a sec. And a few pieces nipped off on the edge there, and she fell right through. Damn it. Yeah. Smells. might be a two-handed operation hang on all right so we're out or we're in whichever one so yeah looky there 
Looks like a, just a slow wear through that captain tape. Let's take a peek at what's under the... Uh, looks he's here. Uh, I think what disturbed me the most about this is this thing is meant to protect in an overcurrent, posi overcurrent situation. And it did no such thing. I, at least I, I assumed it was just supposed to... Off, reset. I'm, I'm assuming that this was supposed to be some kind of breaker. Well, let's let's get the rest of this off here and see which was the actual failure. Looks like it's gonna be. Oh, oh yeah. So. Wow, wow. Look at there. All right. So we're back. I was getting a little, a little turned around, but anyway. So, uh, line in, neutral in, neutral comes straight on out of there, straight to the rails. Um, and that guy right there. These two, the first two varistors, pop over from the neutral. Right on over to here, and they're connected by that little tiny trace to the line out. This thermal fuse carries our line over to right here to this side, and then we have two varistors on this side that eventually end up at ground through that fuse and two varistors on the neutral side you can see they added some extra there for that trace anyway two varistors there that wind up over onto the ground side as well both going through that fuse this is a 113 degrees dungarees uh, TG113. I don't know if that, I'm pretty sure that's Celsius. I would assume it's Celsius because 113 degrees Fahrenheit would not be too hard to overcome. Anyways, so we can see that this thing blew out on the side here, straight onto that fuse, and then out through the top also. And we got the little cap there. I don't know if I mentioned that before on the inside. Anyways, so the biggest problem that I see first and foremost is we we're relying on captain cap eh, captain tape as an isolator and an insulator that was no fucking good at all when you're dealing with a metal housing this was shorting out to ground and did not trip the thermal protection here the thermal protection here and I wouldn't have suspected it to trip that thermal protection but you know you know that thermal protection shouldn't but it didn't trip this thermal protection even when that varistor blew up onto it it didn't blow this one it was enough to trip a 10 amp breaker on my small Jenny but it didn't trip the 15 amp breaker on my big Jenny. So, you know, do with that what you will. I wish I maybe had taken some readings before tearing this thing apart, but we are where we are. Either way, it was dangerous as frig. It would have sucked if this had happened while it was sitting on my bench here, you know, while the, the printer's running or the laser's running or the computer's running and my kids are out here, th this thing would have been live. The metal housing would have been live at 120 volts and dumping 10 amps of current potentially into it without tripping anything. All because we tried to rely on frickin' tape as an isolator that when the varistor blew, it melted. So... Anyways, am I a little freaking pissed? Yeah. Is it likely this caused this? 
Well, it sure as fuck didn't protect it. Uh, you know? So, maybe? I mean... I don't know. Fuck, maybe it was dumping some... I don't know. This sucks. It hurts. Sucks even more is how dangerous this fucking thing was. It's gonna definitely make me think twice and make me consider opening this one, which is also metal. Uh, I, this is stupid. You can't rely on tape. Alright. That's all I got.